But let's get to uh, the producer's favorite segment because they like to yell and hit me with paper snowballs, even though they don't even have to come up to work on Friday. Really? You guys don't even have to be on the air on Friday, so you guys should be happy. This we is should the first be. One, though. Yeah, this is what? This is the first one in a while. <laughs> Mirth. That's <laughs> such a gen, such a gen, gen Z thing. <laughs> now, now, Conrad, when you say that, do people hear it or just me? Because sometimes I feel like you say it and it happens in the whole studio, but that's Justin Meyer that you're yelling? Conrad. Oh. You know how sometimes when he yells during the segment, it comes yeah. off the loudspeaker? Mm -hmm. That wasn't that, though. No. All right. Well, let us know what you guys think. It's time for uh, everyone's favorite segment, Unanswered Questions. Gronk made waves. Polarizing world. Do you take less if you're a quarterback? Should you play GM? Should you play nice? If you're one of the best quarterbacks in the league to uh, build around your team with this silly little sal salary cap? That is the big question that we were talking about, and you guys can give us your thoughts in that clip of Gronk saying, yeah, he should pull a Brady, not marry a supermodel, but, you know, take a little less money to build up his roster and contend every year, let us know at Up and Adam Show, but it's time to hit the AFC North, and Cincinnati is where we kick things off because, whatever, Burrow's deal, it will get done. There get probably to the won't question! Be, it's oh, come on. Media, play out, <laughs> or for? drama, here's hoping. Listen, my question, my question for my Bengals is, can this new look defense pick up where last year's version left off? Just... Just a couple months later, can we keep this thing going? Since he lost three quarters of their starting <laughs> secondary, Jesse Bates signed that big deal down in Atlanta. Von Bell goes to Carolina. Eli Apple's deal expires. He's still on the market, but the Bengals have been preparing for this, okay? And they're betting on their ability to find players in the draft to revamp. Lou Adorubo squad. Over the last two drafts, they've spent all six, I mean, this is crazy, all six of their first second day picks on defensive players, okay? Last year, they took Dax Hill from Michigan as a potential replacement for Jesse Bates. They also added Cam Taylor Britt, who played a big role down the stretch, and defensive lineman Zachary Carter out of Florida. This year, they took Miles Murphy to try to ramp up their pass rush. Dax Hill's college teammate, TJ Turner, and uh, Jordan Battle, who we met. He's versatile, he's at Alabama, we like him. So, uh, if the Bengals are gonna make it to a third straight AFC title game, and finally capture that Super Bowl, these young guys are going to have to get up to speed very quickly and make a huge impact this year. And it's so crazy. The third straight AFC championship, tough conference. They make it, yet they only have four primetime games. Mm. Something's fishy. What is that? What? It, but a little chip on the shoulder. Don't talk about it. The mayor, definitely don't talk about it. But just keep that in your heads as you're going through these off-season workouts. Okay, next up, let's go to Baltimore. Jimmy Seafood, what up? We know you. We love you. We want to go to Baltimore sometime this off-season. Let's get to the question. Let's get the question. Yeah, yeah, ready, lady. The <laughs> Woman! <laughs> Uh, my question is, can the Ravens finally stay healthy? It's that simple. And it's oh, such a, an annoying question, and I hate to ask it, and, and there's no real answer I can give you right now, but that's kind of it, right? The last two years, I've been awful with that. And it's not just Lamar who's missed time. And uh, Ravens fans don't, it's not for Ravens fans. Ravens fans know this, okay? This, this is awful. Yeah, and Jackson missed five games. Dobbins, though, missed nine. Bateman missed the final 11. So we don't even know what he, what is he? We need to know. Mark Andrews, we know he's great when he's out there, but he missed two. He played her for a couple weeks in there, too. Ronnie Stanley, their left tackle, he missed six games. And Marcus Williams, their safety, missed seven as well. And by the way, that's not including Odell, who, of course, missed all of last season with that ACL, and now he's on the team. Um, and that's an injury from the Super Bowl. The Ravens team is loaded, objectively. Like, we, I've given Eric DaCosta a lot of grief over the years, and he did exactly what they needed to do to upgrade the weapons around Lamar. But they have to be able to stay on the field this year for any of this to work out. And if the luck balances out and Baltimore does stay healthy, this is the most dangerous roster they've had in the Lamar Jackson era. And that makes it tough. And you're looking at, you know, do the, do the Bengals go back to the AFC Championship game with this roster staying healthy, looking like it is? It'll be so fun to watch. And they play each other week two, which we talked about on our show after schedule release while all of you guys are talking about Aaron Rodgers up against Patrick Mahomes. They're a sneaky play, these, this Ravens squad, over at FanDuel Sportsbook. They have the fifth best odds to win the AFC right now. Uh, the headlines have been dominated by last year's big three, and they should, I get that. And, of course, the Jets getting all of the headlines, the New York part of that, and Aaron Rodgers, of course, being attached to that. But I could see a, a full-strength Ravens team turning it over and get, turning this conference on its head. So nice little value play there if you want to have some fun. Uh, and finally... Let's go to Pittsburgh and steel talk about... Steel curtain question! The Steelers! I was like, are you throwing something steel at me? That wouldn't be fun at all. Uh, go ahead, Marissa Land. Just go for it. Do you think I can? Let's, let's go. 
Oh, hey. close. Eric, what do you got? Let's get to it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Question. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Uh, my question, um, okay, let me look. Now I'm confused because I like your knock, knock question. Let me get to where I want to get to. Stop stalling. Get to the question. Stop stalling. Can they keep... Can they keep their momentum going into 2023 was my question. Can they keep it going? I mean, you'd think the entire world forgot that the Steelers went 7-2 and two over the second half of the season. Like, when was the last time anybody talked about that? 7-2, and two, okay? Look at the AFC North odds on FanDuel Sportsbook right now, okay? Hamilton dug this up. The Steelers aren't just the biggest long shot to win the division. The Browns have significant... Look at those odds, okay? Compare the Steelers to the Browns. Significantly better odds. So if I'm a Steelers fan, if I'm a, that's got me feeling some type of way. That is working on me. Have we learned nothing from the past 16 years, people? Last season should be the definitive proof that Mike Tomlin is never going to have a losing record. It's never going to happen. And with the way that Kenny Pickett and this young squad played down the stretch, why would anybody think that this team's just going to fall off the ledge and disappear in 2023? It's crazy. My last memory of the 2022 Steelers is courtesy of a mic'd up Coach Tomlin moment when he walked off the field following that crazy, dramatic Christmas Eve win over the Ravens. Remember this? Yeah! <laughs> we grew up tonight. We grew up tonight. <laughs> Honestly, I forgot about that fight. Hamilton, I'm saying it was my, no, Hamilton was like, remember that? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, we grew up tonight. And then I came on and I said, that's all that we wanted to see from them. Like, that was the goal. The goal was not even, and he wants to keep that playoff winning record thing, all that. But he, grow, get together. That was the goal, and he achieved it that night on Christmas Eve. Tomlin's been around the block, okay? He knows what those type of moments can do for a young squad. Even in missing the playoffs, this team clearly matured as the season went on. And I don't think that can go under the radar or be underestimated. And I, I also want to take a quick moment to address what the Steelers did this offseason because their moves didn't grab many headlines that I saw, but they did get better. The biggest concerns, concern about the Steelers going into the offseason was the O-line. And they rebuilt their left side. They drafted Roderick Jones from Georgia. They signed a stud. Um, and uh, the guy from the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took the guy from the Eagles. And then my second biggest concern, guys, was the secondary. And they rebuilt it. They got Peterson in there. They draft Porter Jr. in the second round, which we love the story, but there's more to it than that. And then they got Neal from Tampa Bay. So A-Rob is there. He'll deepen the receiving core. That happened in a trade with the Rams as well. So I know this division will be tough, but make no mistake, the Steelers are going to be relevant. They always are. They're always relevant. How relevant? It all depends on how much they can build off that momentum that they built in that 7-2 and two stretch, down the stretch last year. Don't forget about the Steelers. We're not here on the show. Kareem Jackson on the program. Never a Steeler, longtime Texan. Uh, he's the star of KJAC Television. Everybody, he is here. What questions will we be asking him? Don't even think you're gonna ask me a question here, Kareem Jackson, Green Boy, here next.